This is Curious Brain Thoughts. Paul, it's a delight, a joy. It's tickling the fancy to be here with you. That's great, <laughs> Lou. Just for the record, I'm not tickling anybody's fancy. And it's lovely to be here with you. <laughs> what do we mean by a curious brain fart? A curious brain fart is very much like a regular fart. It's less antisocial. Never has a smell. And it can have different characteristics. So a curious brain fart is literally a thought that's popped into our head, something that we're interested in, something we maybe know something about or know nothing about, that we wanted to talk about. <laughs> Bonjour, how are you? Good, you? I am okay, otherwise known as copesthetic to our American cousins. That is a literally new word to me. I've never heard that word in my life. Well, we don't have any cousins in America. We do in Canada. True. What maybe does maybe it... the Canadians use it as well. What does copacetic mean? Okay. Copus. Is it one word or two words? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You've got your phone in front of you. Figure I it out. I have actually. <laughs> figure it out. I'm gonna. I'm gonna look it up. Please hold. Okay. Talk amongst yourself. Copus. Okay, great. <laughs> Whilst you spell out loud. <laughs> mm. Oh, it's one word. Yes, that's what I said. It's an adjective that means fine, okay, or satisfactory. Fine. Copacetic. Okay. Oh. Great. Fine. Indeed, fine. It's all new. It's uh, Every day is indeed a school day. Uh, so, apart from the holidays, <laughs> those aren't school days. <laughs> just, you know, <laughs> you know, just, just hashtag, just saying, hashtag. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, what um, topic, Paul, shall we discuss today? Well, there's. A number of things that are going on for us at mm. the moment, and a lot of which we're not feeling particularly sure about. So, you know, and they're different for both of us, and some of them are the same, and whatever else. So, what about getting curious about uncertainty? Mm. Good one. That well known, <laughs> comfortable armchair. Mm. We all love to sit in. Mm. <laughs> With spikes and lumps in it. Mm. <laughs> Good for your posture. You know those buzzers that people have on their palms and they shake your hands? Mm. It's like there's one in the seat. <laughs> or in the arm. It's or... a different clientele, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very uncertain armchair. Very much moving on then. Right. Um <laughs> The Captain Google, what's the definition? <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, Paul. The definition of uncertain is not able to be relied on, not known or definite. Um, if you're talking about a person, not mm. completely confident or sure of something, mm. if you were to feel uncertain in yourself. Okay, so... Um. And the definition of uncertainty is the state of being uncertain. That's great. Because <laughs> <laughs> I googled that first, and I was like, "That's a super unhelpful definition." Excellent. <laughs> great. So you can't rely on it. It's not definite. It's mm. not known. Yeah. And it is just it is uncomfortable uncertainty. I don't know. Well, I suppose it varies. It's a, like lots of things. There isn't a definitive. It's a spectrum. And because I'm not sure, I'm uncertain what I'm going to have for dinner. 
Mm. It's not exactly troubling me. Mm. I'm just uncertain. Mm -hmm. Versus I'm... So then you could get like totally... uh, mm, I can't think of the word. (laughs) And you could say, how long am I going to live? I'm uncertain how long I'm going to live. And that's very... um, mm. Troubling. No, the word escapes me. Ugh. You know, when you think about big things like that. You ruminate. You mm, No. No, nothing to do with arthritis. Um It's um anyway, whatever. The word will come to me. So there's like little things and then there's really, really massive things. Mm-hmm. And then there's a whole variety. Mm. You know, so someone who's not sure you know they're feeling unsure about their job maybe yeah. their job is not stable for whatever reason they're mm-hmm. unsure about what to do next uncertain i don't know if i'm going to enjoy this roller coaster i'm feeling uncertain mm. and it's interesting to think about our relative desire for certainty mm-hmm. we want to we want to be sure of mm-hmm. what the next five minutes, five months, five years holds to whatever degree. And um, I mean, we've said this to people in the past. We don't have a crystal ball and we don't know what the future holds. That is the reality. And we still project our hopes and intentions into the future in in the sense that we have a direction of travel and know where we're going or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's interesting that tension between the, f- the, the just the fact that we cannot know what the future holds and our desire to somehow be as certain as we can of of things in our life. Because when you look at the quest for certainty, that can very often be paralysing. Mm. I won't choose something unless I'm absolutely certain of it. Mm. Okay. So how do you become certain of it? You research it, you do this, that, and it, whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm still not certain enough. Yeah. So... No matter the context, the so I think maybe the the search for certainty in your views, in decisions, in whatever, mm. is something that actually holds us back because you spend more time trying to remove the uncertainty. <laughs> versus moving forwards mm. and discovering new things. And there was this cool thing I saw. In times of uncertainty, clarity is the next best thing to certainty. I thought that was quite interesting. Mm. You don't need to be certain about something. I can be clear I'm walking generally in that direction. I don't need to be certain about the number of hills or no. the potholes or whatever else you want to put in the metaphor. I just know I'm going in that direction. Mm. So being clear about that. And I think it is really, really interesting, the difference between clarity and certainty. Because, like you say, clarity is being... Is, is knowing the direction of travel and maybe having a map and mm-hmm. maybe having a compass maybe not but certainty is this kind of cast iron guarantee yeah and does that ever really exist what am i when i think about my life what am I actually completely certain of? Well, I am. I I, I do have things I'm certain of. That like is, tax. 
<laughs> death. <laughs> death and taxes, that's the thing they say, yeah. isn't it? Um, I'm certain of my relationship with people. You know, I, I, which isn't to say these things don't move and shift and change, but it is to say I'm certain in, for example, the love of my family, mm-hmm. that that is a certainty, mm-hmm. which isn't to say it's not without challenges. Mm-hmm. However, that's something that I, you know, people are certain in, for example, their faith. Or they're certain in um, their spiritual practice or the benefits of that yoga has in their life or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But they have a sense of sureness about it because of their experience of it, maybe. Yeah, maybe. And there's, it's, if I think about stuff like that... For example, my spirituality, I also find it helpful to be uncertain (laughs) because it makes me question. Mm. If I just blindly said, well, that is always like that, then I've likely answered lots and lots and lots of philosophical questions that no one else has been able to answer. (laughs) And then I'll become very rigid. Mm. So the uncertainty, because we've talked about this before, not on the podcast, about in the work that we've done in the past and do today, the importance of pushing ourselves off the place from which we stand. Mm. And it's really hard to do that if you're rigidly certain about something. Mm. So introducing that uncertainty helps to topple us from the place where we're standing and invariably, we move forwards. You said something in another one of these um, podcast episodes. I can't remember which one it was, if I'm honest. But you said this, am I sure enough mm-hmm. to be unsure? Mm. Now, if we place the word, replace the word sure with the word certain, am mm-hmm. I certain enough to be uncertain? Mm-hmm. Because to your point, if you're so certain of something, you can't introduce any level of uncertainty of any kind, then you are very rigidly fixed in mm-hmm. your mindset, are you not? Mm-hmm. And um, that can never be a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. I was just trying to think of maybe an absolute certainty apart from tax and death. Like love. Love being a force for good. And then I started to think, Mm -hmm. oh yeah, well, what if it's this type of love or Mm -hmm. that type of love? (laughs) Yes, I was thinking the same. And then I've come back round again to go, oh, well, interestingly, if I try to disrupt what might be a pure and authentic love Mm -hmm. with another idea then that isn't love yes it is a flavor of it's not pure deep love i don't know maybe we're getting a bit deep (laughs) i feel uncertain (laughs) (laughs) what are we talking about so what we're saying uh, it feels like you know that image of um no (laughs) Caramba, <laughs> the um, skyscraper. It's a tall structure, mm-hmm. and it has to move. Yeah. It, you know, so that's the image that was in my head when you were talking about somebody who is so fixed yeah. in their certainty. Mm-hmm. It is as if they built a skyscraper of their own thoughts, which doesn't move in the breeze. And. The reason why they move is because if they don't flex, they will crumble. Mm -hmm. So you have an earthquake, and they are designed to be able to move. So if you think of the earthquake as uncertainty, Mm -hmm. it's interesting to think about examples in our own lives and those of others that 
are around us to see when people really crumble mm. when in uncertainty is introduced mm. and how has a degree of certainty served them yeah served me it's funny because I was talking to mum this morning and I'm sure she won't mind me saying this um, she won't remember by the time it comes out <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag old people, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> no, God love her. She's an absolute legend. And yeah. I was talking to her earlier about the fact that she was were really plagued for a time by these anxiety dreams. Mm. They were vivid, visceral dreams. Mm -hmm. And she really couldn't go back to sleep. She had mm. to get up and make a cup of tea. They they were horrid and they really, really worried her. Um, and it came from a place of there being a huge amount of uncertainty mm. in her life, in the lives of her children, i.e. our lives. <laughs> and and there are others. It's other not, children are available. It's not just us that are causing all the problems. <laughs> <laughs> We've got two siblings exactly. who also who are really troublesome. Are massive nightmares. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Uh, but, and being uh, <laughs> number four, I am number four. You know, it's like Bisto. She saved the best or last. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting point of view. I'm uncertain about it. <laughs> if I'm honest with you. <laughs> and so the thing that really freed Mum from the grip of the, that anxiety that all this uncertainty mm -hmm. had caused was this act of surrender. Mm. Now, f for mum, that comes in the form of prayer. Mm -hmm. um, and she was talking to me about how she'd done that and this, um, this specific prayer cycle that she's used. Mm -hmm. And it was very interesting because she said to me, there are bits of this that absolutely resonate with my own personal journey over the last few years. Who, yours? Mine. Yeah. Which she's then, she said to me, well, I've heard you say mm. <laughs> some of these other. Now, my journey was facilitated by therapy and other things. Mm -hmm. And mum's is facilitated by her faith. And, you know, so the point being, we navigate our way through these uncertainties differently and they do need to be engaged with and navigated. And the way to do that is it strikes me to get different perspectives on it and to. And Paul's going to want to sing a song when I say this, let it go mm. to a degree. Because mm. if you hold it too tightly, then it does create a huge, it can create a huge amount of discomfort in the form of anxiety and stress and other things, I I think. Well, that's been my lived experience anyway. I was just thinking about if there is, if there is, not if there is, maybe, if there is a maximum amount of uncertainty. So... You know, mm. how, and that's different for everybody. You know, some people, what's just popped into my head, some people are totally happy to, like, give up their jobs and just buy a van or something mm -hmm. and just not know from one day to the next other people might go on mission somewhere mm -hmm. and have no idea what's going on from one minute to the next. Mm-hmm. And others, you know, they need to feel like there is some certainty in their plans and they've mapped out their retirement by the age of 30. Because mm -hmm. then there's some order. Mm. And maybe there's this perception around... Because obviously, with either of those two examples I just gave... Anything can come in the middle of that. Yeah. Literally anything at any moment. Yep. And maybe I wonder to what extent there is some sort of attachment 
of certainty to order. And mm. there is disorder with uncertainty. So, therefore, feelings of chaos with uncertainty. And, you know, I can imagine mm. for me, if I was in super uncertain times, which I'm in quite a lot of uncertainty at the moment, and I know I've got capacity for more. Mm -hmm. So if I was, you know, what would chaos look like mm. for me? Because mm. that would be super uncertain. I have no idea from one minute to the next what's going on. Mm. That would feel huge. Yes. You know, chaos, the idea of chaos. Whereas maybe maybe it it isn't. Because if you can let things go... You're not so, you know, not that you're being, mm. you know, in put in harm's way from one minute to the next. Or, you know what I mean? I'm not talking about things being imposed on you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just this idea that, you know, what does maximum uncertainty look like and feel like? Mm. And how much of that is connected to this idea of, well, I like things to be ordered and you know, predictable or... Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I do. There is a plan yes. as opposed to there is no plan. There is no predictability to any of it. Mm -hmm. It's chaos. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. And I think that the predictability and the order and the certainty, for me personally, is linked to a sense of safety. Mm-hmm. And the opposite that you're talking about, that chaotic, mm, it, mm. Feel, it feels unsafe. unsafe. And so I, and, you know, safety to a degree is, is an illusion anyway. You know, think about, I don't know, the safety of your job. Your job, yeah, great example. Safety of your job. We might perceive it to be safe mm -hmm. more because we need it to perceive it to be safe mm. and certain than the reality, which is, to your point, something can come in between mm -hmm. and suddenly it's very uncertain. So, and that can happen it, on an absolute dime in a moment. Which maybe then triggers the primitive side of us. You know, the need for having some certainty is that I feel safe. So... I'm in a cave and I've, I'm able to block the entrance or whatever. Therefore, I feel a bit more certain that a saber-toothed tiger isn't going to come and eat me. Mm. So mm. I feel safer. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if I can remove uncertainty, I will feel safer. Yes. And in order to do that, I need to have a plan. I need an approach. Yes. I need it to be predictable, et cetera, et cetera. So, mm. so... Um, I wonder how can we feel safe in uncertainty? So hmm. that's that's really interesting because if we accept that uncertainty is just a natural part of being mm -hmm. a human on this planet at this time, in in all sorts of arenas, in our personal lives, in and in, in lots of other spheres there's lots of uncertainty and how to feel safe and comfortable with it um i think actually paul that to have an approach to ha to uncertainty might i mean i'm just thinking to myself that might be a real you know a real thing i would personally for me notice it's there you know and it feel where it shows up you know i feel this knot of anxiety in my stomach i feel you know emotionally a bit strung out or however mm -hmm. it however it's showing up then i the other thing i notice is i start o overthinking i then also start catastrophizing so and those are that's when it go so for it to be physically present in my body is one thing but for me to then start these unhelpful thinking habits is a different thing so 
I don't know about feeling safe in um well, I'm not really answering your question. I'm I'm kind of saying how I manage the uncertainty, which yeah. isn't the same. And it's interesting because some of those things around feeling in your body, I need to do something different in order to feel safe. Okay, now I'm going to start thinking about it. How can I feel safe? Mm-hmm. How can I run through all these different scenarios, predict the outcome of all these different scenarios that will end in me feeling safer? And... You know, so I'm just trying to think about, like, th- this has come up in a couple of episodes, I think, so far. I'm just thinking about my situation and the level of uncertainty I'm experiencing in different parts of my life. And I don't feel unsafe. Mm. And when I think about why don't I feel unsafe... I think simply for me, it is that there is this belief that things will be okay. Not that I'm going to sit around and wait for them to be okay. No. Because that's a little (laughs) cray-cray. I'm glad you said it. (laughs) That's like sitting there and a saber-toothed tiger walking towards me and I'm going, it's okay. Everything's going to be okay. I'll just Mm. sit here. Mm. Hmm. There are other things I can do. Roger. And so, yeah, you know, choices come into that and noticing there are times, regular times when I feel it in my body, when I can catastrophize and overthink and noticing that those things are happening. And it's Mm. like, okay, and if I'm able to predict the outcome of this, quickly go and buy a lottery ticket because you'll likely be able (laughs) to win the lottery if you can predict the future. Yeah. So... It's, it's difficult, though, because these things are very... Like, this this fear of uncertainty is very well ingrained. Mm. And it and it strikes me, you were mapping it out earlier, you know, um, this spectrum mm-hmm. from certainty to uncertainty and how we're kind of yeeting up and down that spectrum all the time, basically. I'm over here! <laughs> Way! <laughs> you know, it's yoinking everywhere. Yeah, yeah, Some of that comes from inside of us. Some of that is an event. You get an email and you're like, oh, yes. for five minutes. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Will the universe cut me a break, yeah, please? Yeah, 100%. Um, and then you're back in. So there, it can feel like a real roller coaster as you mm. yeet and yoink along this spectrum, certainty, uncertainty. And maybe some of that is about allowing that to be and saying, I'm going to take my hands, rather than gripping the safety rail in my roller coaster car, Mm -hmm. I'm going to take my hands off and put them in the air. Yeah. Because there is some, this is a wild ride at the moment. And there's some exhilaration to be had from that. And, and the place I would like to be is to yes okay we'll move up and down the spectrum feel unsafe feel really challenged feel it in our bodies catastrophe all of that I I don't I'm not saying I don't want any of that to happen I think it's really normal and super super okay actually it's to not stay there to not dwell there to be able to move through into a place where opportunity uh, uncertainty is this more op- place of opportunity where, well, all these avenues are opening up. What I was thinking about was how it's also entirely subjective. And it's about my perspective or your perspective yes. and so on. For example, you remember a number of years ago, Mum, the legend also known as Mother Teresa. <laughs> the And she is a legend. And her name's Teresa. Yeah. And she's a mother. And she's a mother. Put, I mean, Put that together for yourself, Seriously, guys. complicated, yeah? <laughs> Next we'll be doing quadratic <laughs> equations. <laughs> I, I'm away that day. My dog ate my homework, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> she, a number of years ago, she did wing walking. Oh, yeah. Because she's a legend. <laughs> and her experience of wing walking... Her perspective was, so she'd never done it before, 
she was kind of excited at the idea. Bearing in mind, she was uh, probably 77 or something About like that. that. Yeah, I was thinking mid-70s, yeah. Yeah, because she'd already done a parachute jump. Mm. <laughs> As you do. As you do. So she's doing this wing walking, and afterwards, how was it? Well, I mean, it was all right. You wouldn't go upside down because yeah, it was, was my first game. she was a bit eggy about that. She didn't like and that. And I've been on scarier roller coasters. Yeah. And that was her perspective. Yes. Other people, so the uncertainty of that. Yeah. Other people's perspective, their subjective view of that degree of uncertainty was just too much. Why would you stand on a wing? Yes. When you could be in the plane? Yes, that's right. Why would you be on it? Mm. So I think it's it's interesting. You know, I can think of people in my life who I feel do thrive on uncertainty. Mm. They're very hands off. You know, they're not gripping hold of something too tight. And they'll yoink to a left and a right mm-hmm. and they're, they're okay with that. Mm. And there are others who are struggle with that more. Mm. So it's really complicated, actually, uncertainty. And what you've just introduced there is really, I think, important. If it's my perspective, the um, the level of, you know... The uncertainty might be an objective thing, but how I feel about it is, mm-hmm. of course, uniquely my perspective mm-hmm. on it. And therefore, what that does is open up a myriad of choices. And I know that <laughs> it's like, yeah, all right, Lou, um, I'm stressed up to my eyeballs mm. about whether I'm going to lose my job or not. Mm-hmm. You sitting there and telling me, oh, you've got a load of choices. It's actually like get lost love Mm. and and that's fair and it's also true (laughs) that with all that being fair and true there are still choices that we can make like i personally find it empowering the the thought that i can adjust my own perspective and by doing so transform my experience of this state of uncertainty which will happen sometimes more than others but it it's it's a it's a thing and sometimes quicker than others yeah because it very much depends Mm. it's a complicated beast uncertainty and you know the pursuit of removing all uncertainty leads to paralysis Mm. and i think it's futile yeah so it's um it's like that you know accepting the things you cannot change changing the things you can and the wisdom to know the difference mm-hmm. because railing against something you cannot change is is a huge waste of your own capacity and your own power. And yet it's something that I've fallen foul of. So, well, same here. You know, I think it's just trying to engage as best as possible that decision-making. Mm. Would I like to choose something different for mm. myself? Mm. Yes or no, I can't change my situation. I can change how I'm looking at it, whatever that is. Would I like to choose that, yes or no? There's a... And sometimes I can't choose yes. No. Yes, no. No. (laughs) Yeah, but no, but... No, what I said was, sometimes I can't choose yes. (laughs) Oh, dear. Um, I was reading a book about emotional agility, and it did say... There's that Viktor Frankl quote, the in-between the stimulus and your response Mm -hmm. that is where your flexibility is that's where your opportunity is so your point paul around not holding gripping things too tightly another way of looking at that is to say if you're not holding it too tightly there is a little bit of wriggle room and that's your gap in between the uncertainty smacking you in the face Mm. And your choice about how you respond to it. Talk about uncertainty, that man search for meaning by Viktor Frankl. Flipping heck. Mm. Yeah, you know, that's uncertainty on steroids. Right. So going back to the thing earlier, is there like a maximum 
level of uncertainty before somebody breaks or whatever yes it's it's very person dependent mm. and that stuff in the um you know in the prisoner war camps and the holocaust mm-hmm. and you know hearing the the total abstract uncertainty from second to second mm-hmm. was too much for some people mm-hmm. and he talks about you know those who actively go and like try and escape in order to die yes and for others they were able to hold it loosely enough that they could survive mm. you know and that is uber extreme that is yeah absolutely. a bit deep a bit heavy and um yeah it is deep but we said that a number of times in this episode because this search for certainty this search for safety is a fundamental part of of our human experience and that's why it's a deep topic because it touches that and i think it's i think honestly this is something we could come back to i'd be really interested to hear how people deal with uncertainty for themselves you know mm. um because there isn't there's no one size fits all answer here i wish there was there isn't no nope. um but i think by sharing some of the the there's some collective wisdom as well mm. having said that you know we can and it's not all bad uncertainty isn't all bad it's really not it's really really not and it's kind of like how society culturally whatever for example uh western culture is we've talked about this before um based on deficit language mm-hmm. which is not a great starting point so when you introduce things like uncertainty and there was something else that popped in my head that's disappeared you introduce things like uncertainty failure mm-hmm they are bad things Mm -hmm. and that's kind of preconditioned that's bad yeah you need savings because you've got to prepare for the unexpected you need a plan so that you're certain about you can da 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 da. and there's nothing wrong with those things nothing wrong and is is because this stuff is non-dualistic yes so there is certainty and uncertainty. Yes. And we only know what it's like to feel certain and safe because we know what it's like to feel uncertain. And, and vice versa. Damn it. <laughs> it's kind of useful, just like the definition of uncertainty, the state of being uncertain. Mm. Great. Something mm. that is uncertain or that causes one to feel uncertain. Mm. 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 That's very illuminating. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Oxford, and thanks, England. Amazing. <laughs> You're welcome. (laughs) Bye. Bye. We'd very much welcome your input. And if you've got anything to say or a topic you want us to be curious about, you can email us, curiousbrainfarts at gmail.com. Curious Brain Thoughts.